We've all been there. You edit a photo, boost the colors a little, and suddenly some parts look overly intense, while others barely have any color. It happens to all of us, and the usual tools like vibrance and saturation, or even the color mixer model, don't always fix the problem. That's because saturation isn't evenly distributed across an image. Some areas of a photo naturally have more saturation than others, and without a way to target those spots individually, very easy to end up with a natural looking color. So what if you could adjust colors based on how saturated they already are? That's exactly what a saturation mask does. Hi everyone, what's going on? I'm Andrea. And in this video, I will show you how to use the saturation mask to make uh, your colors look more natural and balanced. A saturation mask is a simple but powerful tool in Photoshop that lets you target only the most saturated or least saturated areas uh, of your image. And totally independent from the hue and the brightness. So the actual color doesn't matter. This makes it a powerful tool for bringing balance back into your photos. Well, you might be wondering, wait, isn't this just like using the Vibrance tool? Yes and no. While Vibrance does a good job of boosting muted colors while protecting already saturated ones, it uh, lacks precision. A saturation mask gives you that extra level of control, helping you make subtle, natural-looking color corrections without overdoing it. All right, let's jump in and I will show you how to create a saturation mask in Photoshop. And here we are in Lightroom and I'm gonna use this image. I've chosen an image with a rich variety of colors, uh, perfect for demonstrating how we can fine-tune color relationships uh, and balance with more precision. This is uh, from Iceland, a place that's full of uh, opportunities to work with uh, stunning colors and lights. Uh, I'll be returning there this July for my photography workshops, uh, where we'll be exploring locations just like this. And if you are interested, there are only a few spots left, so make sure to check out uh, the link in the video description for all the details, and I'd love to have you join us. So by bringing up the vibrance, uh, we've got uh, these uh, results. I'm intentionally boosting the value too much just to analyze how the image uh, reacts to the adjustments. I'm gonna create a virtual copy with the right click, create virtual copy, and on this one, I'm gonna put vibrance back to zero again, and I'm gonna increase uh, the saturation like that. With both versions side by side, notice how saturation creates uh, an exaggerated uh, almost a natural intensity in certain areas, while vibrance maintains a more even color balance by protecting already saturated colors. However, both versions uh, do not align with the direction I want to bring uh, the edit. Now, let's take this uh, a step further in Photoshop and let's try to adjust the colors using the saturation mask. Even though it's not immediately obvious, uh, creating a saturation mask is actually very simple. I've already opened the image in Photoshop and all we need to do is uh, head down to these icons here in the layer window, select Create New Adjustment Layer, and click on Selective Colors. At the top of the Properties window, we see the colors drop down. We're gonna drag the black slider all the way to the left for each of the colors in the drop-down menu. We want all of them with blacks set to minus 100. For whites, neutrals, and blacks, uh, we will uh, do the opposite. So we are gonna set the black slider to plus 100%, like that. This creates a black and white map of our image where brightness represents saturation. White uh, areas are the most saturated, mid-gray areas are moderately saturated, and black areas have the least saturation. Keep in mind that most photos don't reach anywhere near Photoshop's maximum saturation levels, and that's why the saturation mask often looks dark. So white reveals and black conceals. It follows basically the principles as luminosity masks, and if you are not very familiar with luminosity masks and would like me to create some tutorials on them and how I use them for advanced post-processing, let me know in the comments down below. Now, a quick tip, instead of repeating these steps every time you want to create a saturation mask, you can save it as a preset. To do this, click on the small icon at the top right of the Properties window and choose Save Selected Color Preset. Then, just name it just Saturation Mask. To use our saturation mask, we are going to move over to the Channels window. Hold down Command on Mac or Control on Windows and click the RGB channel. At this point, you can either use the selection right away or save it as a channel for future use. 
In this case, I want to adjust uh, the least saturated areas, not the most. And to do that, I need to invert the selection. There are two ways. The first one is go to the top menu, click Select and then Invert. Or the quicker method is by using the keyboard shortcut Shift Command I, like that. So I'm going to save it as a new channel by clicking the icon Save Selection as Channel here in the Channels window. And I'm going to rename it Vibrance 1. So it targets the least saturated colors. The whites represent the areas with a lower saturation and black a higher saturation in this case. As you can see, the vibrance mask tends to be quite light since most images have a lot of low saturation areas by default. All right, let's apply our mask. I'm going to turn off the selective color layer since we don't need it anymore. Now that we have got our mask, I'm going to head down here and select the hue saturation adjustment layer. And you will see the mask applied automatically. A really handy keyboard shortcut to check and visualize the mask on any adjustment layer is to hold down the Option key and click on the layer mask. This will toggle the mask view on and off. Now, with our saturation mask applied, we can fine-tune the intensity. Clicking on the Hue Saturation layer, I'll gradually increase the saturation slider. And watch how the colors become richer without affecting already vibrant areas. That's wonderful. So right now, the mask affects too much of the image. To refine it, we will create a more selective version by intersecting the mask with itself, narrowing its effect to only the least saturated areas. And to do that, I'm going to hold down Command and click over the Vibrance 1 channel. We have got the active selection, and then I'm going to hold down Command, Option, Shift, and click one more time over the Vibrance 1 channel. You should see a tiny X icon that means uh, we are intersecting the mask itself. Then I'm going to click uh, the Save Selection as Channel icon. And now we have created a restricted version of our Vibrance mask. And you can see Alpha 2 is uh, now our Vibrance 2 mask. From here, we can create uh, in the same way the more restricted Vibrance 3 mask. So again, Command, Option, Shift and click uh, and Vibrance 4 and so on like that. Now that we have four versions of our Vibrance mask, we can pick the best one for this image. I think Vibrance 3 looks perfect here, so I will hold Command on Mac and Control on Windows and click to select it, then apply it to the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. I'm going to grab the Saturation slider and increase the saturation level. Something like that. Here is the before and after, before and after. I really like it. Let me put the different uh, edits side by side and look at how the colors in the version where we use the saturation vibrance mask are beautifully balanced. I find this type of adjustment uh, makes the shots look more organic. The hue saturation adjustment tool offers uh, many other features that allows us to tweak uh, the hue and lightness of colors. For example, I can select a specific color from the drop down menu here and adjust the hue of the reds. Uh, to make them more reddish. Or I can tweak the yellows by slightly increase the saturation and shifting the hue just a bit towards green to enhance color separation. Something like that. Here's the before and after, before and after. And as you can see, we have endless options. So creating these different saturation masks manually is definitely doable, but it can take a bit of time. If you are looking to speed up the process, I highly recommend using an action panel, just like I do. I've been using specifically the TK Action Panel by Tony Kuiper for uh, over a decade and now. It's a great tool for more uh, advanced uh, and detailed edits, uh, and I honestly think it's uh, well worth the price. Just to be clear, I'm not sponsored by Tony Kuiper. I bought it with my own money and have found it uh, super useful. Of course, you don't need to use this technique every single time. There are plenty of situations where the regular vibrance, uh, saturation or channel mixer adjustments uh, are more than enough to achieve uh, great color harmony in uh, your images. This is simply a more advanced technique to add uh, to your toolkit and experiment with it uh, when you think it's the right choice. So go ahead, test it out and let me know how it worked for you in uh, the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.